hi there so uh, so now let's uh, start talking about uh, calculus of uh, functions of complex variables um, and um, so as you know calculus sort of uh, can be uh, uh, or rather there are two sort of approaches uh, to studying calculus one is uh, so one sort of stresses on local properties of functions and uh, another sort of um, branch of calculus is what focuses on global properties um, so lo by local properties we mean we, we mean that let's say we have a function we are looking at the function um, at a very microscopic scale or what it's doing locally near a point x for instance uh, in the case of real functions and globally um, we're talking about uh, sort of notions like areas and volumes and so on um, so just to uh, just to get, make it more precise, uh, when we talk about local properties, we are talking about derivatives and uh, global properties. Uh, we are talking about integrals. Um, and so, why is a derivative considered a local property? Because uh, here we are thinking of concepts like uh, rates of change, um, slope. And uh, if you if you think about it uh, more physically, then uh, we are talking about let's say velocities or accelerations, velocities, accelerations, and uh, uh, whereas when we are talking about global properties of functions, um, uh, and therefore uh, of of uh, integrals, uh, we are talking about concepts like areas, uh, volumes. And again, from a more uh, physics point of view, you can think about, uh, let's say, the total amount of work done or the energy expended. So energy um, or work. And, and of course, there are many other ideas involved here. Um, and, and, and we also know uh, from, let's say, our study on functions, uh, uh, functions of real variables that uh, these two are not entirely separate. Uh, so by the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, we know that uh, integrals and derivatives are sort of very intimately related. So, um, so let's start talking about the calculus of complex functions by uh, discussing the idea of derivative of a function of a complex variable. Um, so, so let's start uh, start with the derivative, the idea of a derivative, um, and and in order to motivate. Uh, derivatives of complex functions, uh, let's quickly sort of review uh, uh, our ideas of derivatives of a function of a real variable. What, what is the derivative of a function of a real variable? So let's say we have a fu function y, uh, y uh, which is a function of x, which is, so we just have one real variable. So x is belongs to the set of real numbers, y belongs to the set of real numbers. And then, uh, so for instance, we might have a, we, we can draw a curve. So we have the x-axis, we have y-axis, and we might have some curve like this. Uh, and then let's say we look at the function <coughs> near a point x. Let's say this is x. Uh, and then we define the slope near the point x uh, as dy, which is the amount. Uh, so if we move a small distance dx from x, so we arrive at the point x plus dx, uh, then the value of the function changes by an amount dy. Uh, and this change is uh, expressed as f prime x dx or dy dx times dx. And this f prime x is uh, what we call the derivative of the function f with respect to x. So here uh, dy over dx, f prime x is the derivative of the function at x. Uh, and, and this dy over dx is basically the slope of the curve uh, at the point x. So this is the slope. Um, now, uh, there are a couple of assumptions uh, or there are a couple of things uh, that go into the definition of this derivative. So, uh, so first of all, we are, we are assuming that uh, if we move a small distance dx, then uh, the amount of change in the function f which is dy is also small. So if dx is small, then dy is also small. And this is uh, this comes about because uh, if the derivative of a function exists, then we are assuming the existence, or we are assuming that the function is continuous around the point x. 
and so 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 that is implied in the definition of a derivative so um, so let's just write that write that down if dx is uh, an infinitesimal distance is infinitesimal um, then so is the change in the function f which is dy uh, the other idea is that uh, the derivative is independent of the direction so that the derivative at the point x is unique uh, which means that if we move a distance dx to the right like in this direction or if we move a small distance dx to the left the derivative at the point if it exists is unique so now uh, along the x-axis there are only two directions we can move in we can either move right or we can move left and we're, and we're ignoring endpoints for now so let's just consider within the bulk of the function so uh, so the derivative if uh, f prime x <coughs> exists uh, at x uh, then it is unique and is independent of the direction uh, in which we approach the point x and is independent of direction um, of dx for instance so um, so what Another way to state this sort of property that it's unique is that um, we can define the derivative uh, f prime x as limit uh, dx approaches 0, which means again dx is infinitesimal, uh, f of x plus dx minus f of x divided by dx. So here we are assuming that dx is positive and we are saying that the derivative at x is the limit that dx goes to 0, very small dx. Uh, and uh, so if, if we move an infinitesimal distance uh, dx from x let's say towards the right in the positive direction uh, then the value of the function changes or the value of the function at the location x plus dx is fx plus dx so this fx plus dx minus fx is the change in the function which is dy right um, so fx plus dx minus fx is the change dy divided by dx in the limit dx goes to 0 is the derivative of the function f prime x and we are saying that this is, should be equal to limit dx approaches 0 if we move uh, to the left from the point x we should get we should get the same value of the derivative so we can write this as fx minus dx minus f of x minus dx so again, I'm assuming dx is positive, and we're just and flipping the signs uh, here, which is we're moving by the, the magnitude of dx is mod modulus of dx, and we're just moving towards the left. So we are arriving at the point x minus dx, and we are saying that this, these two are the same at the point x if the derivative exists. It is unique at the point x. Okay. So um, now this is uh, the usual way we. Uh, we sort of think about the derivative at the slope of a curve at the point x um, but uh, let's sort of explore this idea a little bit more and uh, instead of and, and, and if you recall uh, when we sort of st started talking about how to plot complex functions uh, we discussed the idea that uh, for a function uh, for a function of one real variable um, we could have chosen to plot the functions in a way that we make the x-axis like this and we also draw the y-axis horizontally in this manner and then we can think about uh, <coughs> uh, the, a function as, let's say, mapping a point x to some point here um, and then drawing arrows in this manner that, okay, so from this set x, uh, the function takes us y equals fx, uh, takes us from this set x to this set y. And then we can sort of draw arrows saying that, okay, uh, the, uh, so this is, let's say, y, which is the image of the point x under the mapping y equals fx. Uh, so, so let's sort of uh, see what the derivative looks like in, on, on this particular plot. So let's say you are at some point x and you draw a small arrow dx from here. Let's say this is dx. Uh, so this is dx. And then um, what is the derivative uh, at, at the point x? Well, so if you have an infinitesimal arrow here, uh, by again, by the assumption of continuity, we'll say that we have an infinitesimal arrow um, around the point y which is the image of x so if y is fx 
and let's say this point x maps to this point x then this point dx will map to let's say this point um, fx plus dx so this is fx and this is fx plus dx and this gives us an image arrow on along the y-axis which might look like this so this we call dy right so we have uh, an arrow dx along the x-axis and its image uh, on the y-axis is this arrow dy <clears throat> and then uh, we can define the derivative as uh, so the, so we know that the derivative um, uh, or rather dy over dx is f prime x and therefore dy is f prime x times dx and this is the derivative of the function at, at the point x. So, so another way to think about of the derivative especially uh, which becomes more um, uh, evident when we plot it in this manner is that uh, the derivative of a function of a real variable, one real variable is that real number f prime x with which we must multiply the arrow dx so this is an arrow dx along the x-axis so it's that real number with which we must multiply the uh, arrow dx in order to get the arrow in the image on the image line or or in other words um, or let me just write it down so <clears throat> so the derivative is or uh, derivative f prime x is that real number Uh, with which we multiply uh, the arrow dx to get uh, the image arrow dy. Arrow dy, right? Now, uh, now notice that uh, we can sort of uh, exploit this notion a little bit more and say that <clears throat> in fact dy can be written as modulus of f prime x dx now f prime x is a real number so if we if we sort of split it into its modulus and sign then it can only have two signs plus or minus right which means that if we draw an arrow dx in this manner uh, dy could either be pointing to the right or it could be pointing to the left. So dy has two possibilities. Either dy could point to the left, it could be negative, or it could be positive. So if dy is positive, we mean that the slope is positive. Uh, so for instance, if you think of it um, in the way we conventionally draw plots, then um, in this region of the curve, we have a positive slope, and in this region of the curve, we have a negative slope. So if we, if we are always moving uh, towards the right along the positive, uh, along the x-axis, then along this uh, part of the curve, dy is positive, whereas along this part of the curve, uh, dy is negative. And that is what we are trying to emphasize here, that there are two possibilities. Because we are restricted to move um, along a line, we have two possibilities. We can either have a positive uh, sign of dy or a negative sign of dy. Uh, let's say we fix the sign of dx. Then we have these two possibilities, right? And, and that's what we are claiming here, that dy is um, modulus of f prime x times dx, and there are two possibilities of the sign, either plus or minus. Okay, um, <clears throat> so these are sort of uh, just a review of uh, the notions of, uh, let's say, the derivative of a function of a real, one real variable. Um, and now the idea uh, to define the derivative of a function of a complex variable is, is, to, is to say that, okay, we, we, we want to retain the pro these the, the two main properties of the derivative uh, on the complex plane, uh, the two main properties being that if a derivative of a complex function exists at a point z in the complex plane, then um, it must be unique uh, at the point z. Uh, and, and also, uh, we'll, we'll assume that uh, if a derivative exists, it implies that the function is also continuous, which means if we draw infinitesimal arrows in the z plane, it maps to infinitesimal arrows in the w plane. Um, so in the next part of the video, let's exploit these ideas and and sort of see uh, what is uh, what is the geometrically geometrically what does the derivative of a function of a complex variable mean, especially keeping in mind this picture of um, the derivative of a function of one real variable. Um, so see you in the next part of the video then. Thanks.